I've chosen to support the project because the case, uh, both economically and environmentally, is so clear. Uh, something can be done about this now, and actually by saving the rainforest now, it probably have more impact than a lot of the other small initiatives put together. When I hear about deforestation, it makes me sad, frankly, um, uh, and, and also it creates a sense of urgency because I think whereas some aspects of climate change are quite hard to grasp, like emissions, I mean, you can't actually physically see them, uh, actually the concept of the Amazon rainforest or rainforests across the world disappearing is far more physical and evocative, and I think therefore it creates a sense of urgency uh, and you know, something can be done and must be done to preserve them. Climate change um, affects me at home and at work uh, enormously, partly because my children are now increasingly aware of the importance of tackling this you know, really significant crisis. But actually also the partners in our business, the employees in our business, very often when I'm visiting one of our shops, I'm asked, are we doing enough about climate change? So people expect it of large businesses like ours. They expect us to be taking a lead. They expect us to be acting responsibly. And because being a responsible business is absolutely sort of core to our DNA, uh, that's something which we are very keen to rise to and, and lead the field in. John Lewis and Waitrose have already made significant cuts in our carbon uh, emissions uh, relative to the size of the business and we're now committed to looking for absolute changes in our overall carbon emissions despite the fact we're a growing business. Uh, and furthermore, we're committed to going further than that and I'm actually now just chairing a group which brings together people from across both of our businesses uh, to look at how we can move those targets forward, how we can integrate uh, looking at the climate impact of all our investments uh, alongside all the financial metrics, for example, and, uh, and yeah, that's really exciting and stretching some of our most creative people, particularly in areas like building design, uh, where you know, we, we have a leading position in terms of uh, designing uh, carbon efficient buildings. So I think um, corporate leaders can play an important part uh, in trying to raise awareness and encourage people to do something about climate change. They can do that in a number of ways. They can do it by actually helping their companies and encouraging people in their companies to, to implement policies and to make products available to people where the impact of those products on climate change is, is, is clearly established and well known. Uh, and, and, and helps to improve things. But they can also do it, frankly, by encouraging uh, people in their businesses and indeed people who shop with their businesses or people come into contact with them uh, to take this issue seriously, to realise that there's something that they can be doing about it uh, and to get on board and get you know, to support this campaign and others like it. We as a generation, um, I think, have a responsibility to, uh, to really push this agenda for people who are following us. Uh, you know, if we fail to act, uh, the people who follow us will actually be the people who suffer most. Uh, and, and certainly, you know, I, I think that uh, one of the most important things we can do is make sure this is at the top of the political agenda uh, and that something is therefore done about it now when it can make a difference uh, in 10, 20, 30, 40, 50 years' time. I have been to rainforest. Um, I got lost uh, for a little while in the Malaysian rainforest, uh, which was uh, which was quite exciting, but uh, but also uh, you know, a great experience. Um, you know, it's uh, a place uh, which is beautiful. Um, it's hot. It's sweaty. Uh, it's got a wonderful smell about it. A very sort of you know, it's a very earthy smell, uh, and the sounds are incredible. Uh, it's just a, a cacophony of noise. Um, and particularly at night actually, uh, and it's a very evocative place and, and full of very, very large ants, uh, but also lovely like, pools and streams of cool water too, so uh, no, it's a very beautiful place and I enjoyed being there very much. Yes, I've had a few encounters with frogs, um, but perhaps the one that stands out in my mind is when uh, we bought a house and uh, we had very small children and a, and a pond, a small pond in the, just literally outside the kitchen door in the back, uh, back garden in, in London. Um, and we had to empty it for safety reasons and I, uh, I, I ended up with a bucket full of about 35 frogs. I thought, what am I going to do with 35 frogs? So I uh, quietly jumped over the, the fence into the neighbour's garden and, and introduced 35 new frogs to their pond. <laughs> so there was an invasion.